Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag. My first video on this channel and I thought it would be a good one to start with just so that you guys can get a sense of my reading taste as it is right now. The first question is the best book that you've read so far this year. Um, and I narrowed it down to five. The first one we have is Assembly by Natasha Brown. So this book is about a black British woman just kind of living her life. So she basically has the job that she's always wanted, but it all comes at kind of a cost. She's just feeling stifled by the industry she's in. She's in finance and she's dating this white guy who takes her back to his family home. It's a lot of that's sort of reminiscent of Get Out, but it's a lot of sort of just rumination on being black and British today. And I actually go to university in the UK. I'm originally from America, but um, I thought it was a really great read. Very fast as well as tiny. Um, and it made me cry. <laughs> and an amazing debut. It's her first novels. So only good things to come from there, I think. The second one is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Now, everyone, I feel like, has read this book, heard of this book, whatever, but I read it, I think, in January on audiobook, and it was amazing. I love gaming, especially over the summer, like Legend of Zelda, Stardew Valley, um, Skyrim, stuff like that. And I really loved how Gabrielle Zevin, like, sort of incorporated the game building into the story as a whole and sometimes creating these games as a way for the two main characters Sadie and Sam to kind of communicate with each other and I just really oh I just this book made me feel so many things you felt like you really got a lot of time with the characters and that was something I just loved I'm a character driven reader I feel like everyone's already said great things about this book but I just also have the best things to say about it so it was incredible. The next book that I would say is one of the best is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. Um, also, a side note, it was like a weird twist at the end for me when I read it. Did you know that she's Japanese breakfast? Is that the name of her? Yeah, well anyway, I didn't know. She was all, throughout the book, she was like, oh, I'm into music and whatever. And then at the very end, she's like, yeah, I'm Japanese breakfast. And I had no idea, like no one talks about that. I don't know Japanese breakfast very well in terms of her music, but I know a couple of her songs and I knew her enough to like recognize that. So I found it weird that no one, I don't know, mentions it, but Crying in H Mart is a beautiful book. It's very complex. And I think it's the best memoir I've read this year so far for sure. There's another memoir I read that I am really, I was really disappointed by, um, which I'll talk about in a bit. So she talks about her relationship with her um, late mother through food. She uses cooking as a way to reconnect with her mother and it's very, oh, it's just beautiful. Another debut. I wonder if Michelle's honor is going to get into writing fiction or if she's going to do anything in the future. I need to look that up. But, um, love love loved it like loved it the fourth one i actually have a copy of from my library and that is a curious beginning by diana rayborn this book i read this in january and i'd heard a lot of hype about it specifically from katie colson and olivia reads a latte they were always talking about this series so i picked it up and i just loved it i had no idea that i was going to be so invested in a Lepidopterist, like Veronica's a lepidopterist. That means she she catches butterflies and like keeps them and kind of studies them like scientifically. The love interest is named is Stoker. I love Stoker, and um, he is a taxidermist. And I, like, name a more quirky fun duo than this. Like that you can't. And Veronica's very like strong woman and Stoker just kind of sits back and like lets her do her thing but basically in this first book Veronica's aunt died at the beginning of the book and she's kind of like looking for an adventure and she, the only thing keeping her at home 
was her aunt. So now she's like, oh, well, I want to just like go somewhere and travel. And this guy comes up to her and, or he like comes to her house and he's like, you're in danger, come with me. And she's like, well, that's great. Cause actually I was like looking for a way out of my city anyway. And then he takes her to this place where Stoker lives, drops her off and is like, hey Stoker, like you take care of her, watch over her. And then he leaves and a mystery ensues and it's like a whole series of them solving little quirky fun mysteries and i just like these characters have my heart this is such a good book um and the reason i have it is actually because i'm gonna kind of skim read it because i have the second one right here perilous undertaking and I'm gonna be reading that very soon. So, yeah. This cover is not as cute, it's a bit old. This one is like what they look like usually. So yeah. And then the last books I have as my best books of the year so far, I'm sorry, maybe I should have made this less than five, but I just simply, I couldn't do it. Um, these books, it's two, so that's also cheating but whatever and those are led and born and bloodmarked by tracy Dio. if i was like 14 reading these books i would have been so obsessed like like i was with percy jackson and i'm still obsessed as someone who doesn't read ya much anymore i loved how tracy dion wrote in a way that was very accessible for a younger audience but also kind of complex so led and born if you haven't heard um follows our main character brie and she's a black woman living in the south in america and she enters into this early college program at northern carolina university north carolina university and then she discovers that the knights of the round table are real and there's this whole secret society thing with them and then there's also maybe something going on with some ancestral sort of voodoo-ish magic so it's gonna be a trilogy i believe and i've read the two the first two books this year um, and i'm waiting for the third one to come out and i'm so excited i love brie i love cell he's like this moody like witch or like sorcerer sorcerer sorcerer, sorcerer, sorcerer guy um and it's just uh, really good i do want to acknowledge though I think I'm not really the person that should comment on this, but I think a more, more nuanced discussion of racism in the South and stuff like that is definitely, it's not perfect with that. When I'm editing, I'll add some videos that I watch or I'll put them in the description section because some black creators have had issues with it. And I think that these issues are totally valid and Maybe should be explored a bit. But for me and my enjoyment of the series, I loved, loved. Next up, so I was watching Pia Laplace's video, a media book freak out type video, and she actually added the worst book you've read. And I think that's valid. So I'm jumping on that train. And my answer is not, I guess, what um, a mainstream, it's a bit of a hot take, or maybe not. It's Anything I've Read This Year by Cassandra Clare. I've read four books by Cassandra Clare this year, all on audio, and I've decided like a couple days ago, I'm done. I'm done. Disclaimer, okay? I was not someone that read any Cassandra Clare books growing up. Um, they don't have any sort of nostalgia for me. They were always around, but I just never, I never read them. Bear that in mind. I think the nostalgia is a big part of this series. So I read the first three books in the mortal, mortal instruments and the 62 percent of clockwork angel which i dnf'd although i will say that that was better than the mortal instruments it just still had this same issues for me that i couldn't come back from keep me a very short and try to be nice um Actually, no, I'm not gonna try to be nice. These these books suck, in my opinion. Like the characters are very one-dimensional. They don't feel real. Big, big, big issue with the old incest. incest. The incest. 
of it all. That is, it's just like, you know, spoilers, I guess, for Mortal Instruments, but Cassie really, she pulled it back in the third book, sort of, and was like, oh, Jace, you're not actually Clary's brother, but somehow she still managed to incest more because she had Clary kiss her actual brother. This is all very concerning to me, and Cassandra Clare used to write Ron and Ginny fanfiction. I don't know, something about it is not, it's not great to me, but most of the characters were really one-dimensional. I didn't really care. I found them really annoying. I found Clary especially super annoying. Chase sucks. Simon never gets any sort of fair chance. Yeah. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, characters were the worst part. Plot was also a bad part. Pacing, uh, uh, I'm done, I'm done with that one. Next up, we have the best sequel that you've read this year. And for this, my answer is not a surprise. Bloodmarked by Tracy. Now for new releases you haven't read yet. So I have three that I'm really looking forward to. The first one is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I love Emily Henry, although I have to say I really feel like I love her. And then some books I think for me are misses. I didn't really like People We Meet on Vacation. I thought Book Lovers was fine. Um, and I remember I really loved Beach Read, but I can't find my copy anywhere and I've been wanting to reread it. But Happy Place has been very anticipated for me just because like it's Emily Henry and it's summer and I want that book. If you don't know what that book is about, it's basically like a second chance romance type of thing where this these people have been dating, I think for like five years and their friend group is super close and then they break up but they don't want their friends to know because they're all going on this big trip and on the trip, they pretend to like stay together. I heard someone say, if you like people we meet on vacation, you'll like that. But if you like more like book lovers and beach read, you won't like it as much. So maybe I won't really like it, but I just need a bit of Emily Henry like banter and chat in my life. Second book I really want to read soon is Trust of the Emerald Sea. Okay, so I have a big thing about doing things like in order. And for Brandon Sanderson, I've read, I read Skyward, but I need to read the second one. And I, that was like a couple years ago. And I have The Final Empire and I really want to read it this summer. I'll talk about that later. In my mind, I'm like, oh, well, I just need to read The Final Empire and then I can like start on my whole Brandon Sanderson thing and I'm gonna read things in order and whatever. But Trust the Emerald Sea is a one-off type of situation. When I heard that he wrote it for his wife who said like while they were watching The Princess Bride that she loved the movie, but she wishes Buttercup had more agency and kind of more to do. And then he wrote this book for her. Uh, first off, Get you a man like Brandon, okay? Get you a man like that because I love that movie. Why do I keep crying today? I'm okay. Anyway, I love that movie. I love it. Like I talk all the way through it because I know all the lines and it's just, oh, what a film. And so when I heard that about Trusty Emerald Sea, it's a need, not a want. I gotta read it and there's like pirates and she's on a ship and I'm in a really I'm a really pirate piratey girl like I love a good pirate story number three and the last one I'm looking forward to reading that's a new release is Yellow Base by R.F. Kuang I have some complicated feelings about R.F. Kuang now because I read Babel and I'll talk more about that in a minute but I, it wasn't really for me however I read The Poppy War in the beginning of the year or like a couple months into the year and i loved it i think i read it too spread out and i was also reading other things at the time so it was more of a four star for me but i really liked the direction things were going in and i have the dragon republic so i'm gonna read that next and then i have the burning god back in the uk so i'll read that in the fall but Babel, i didn't really love and now i'm a bit more nervous to start the dragon republic and yellow face i'm also a bit nervous about because i really want to like rf kwam i do but i just didn't really love babel but i'm still really looking forward to the book i think it's really interesting i also want to go into publishing someday and this book is kind of satirizing the publishing 
industry and it's a lot about racism in the industry and a lot of interesting stuff i just am hoping that she handles it in a way that's not super on the nose kind of beating you over the head with her message because that's what i felt like she did with babel a little bit like it was a little bit oversimplified for me i said i wasn't going to talk about it now most anticipated releases for the second half of 2023 so i have several um we're gonna be fast the first one is a new Percy Jackson book. Number six in the series, after all this time, I was simply shocked because I was looking up what books are coming out for the rest of the year for this video. And I had no idea about this. How did I not know? It's called The Chalice of the Gods and it's coming out, let me look it up, on September 26th. And apparently, I don't know. Okay, so the synopsis sounds a little bit goofy to me. And I just have to be honest with that. I don't know, maybe it'll be like, you're not supposed to take it seriously. But yeah, it looks like we're setting up for three books as of right now. And so basically, Percy is now going into senior year of high school and he needs some college re recommendation letters and he wants to get them from the gods. First off, what the- what? What do you mean? I guess that would be good. Like, okay, Zeus said that you need to get into, like, NYU. Okay fine we'll just let you in but also what like the whole world doesn't know about anyway so that's a bit i don't know how that works but basically the gods are like uh we're not just gonna give that to you even though you save the whole world okay so you have to do these tasks for us and the first task is something about a chalice and that's what i know i want to reread that series i want to maybe i'll do a vlog about it and then read that one i'm excited i'm a i'm a bit confused but i'm i'm excited i'm excited next up on november 7th we're getting a prequel to legends and latte it's called bookshops and bone dust by travis baldry and i'm excited i think when i read legends and lattes it was the perfect time it was christmas last year it was the vibes were really good. I loved how kind of chill it was. I watched someone's video on it. I wish I could remember who. And they were like, I wanted to love it, but I just didn't because the characters were kind of one-dimensional. And now that I think about it, I do agree. So I'm hoping that this book can sort of improve on that a little bit. I like Viv. I liked the characters of the first one. But now that I do think about it more, like if I'm thinking about it really critically, I think that you know, characters should have a bit more complexity than just doing one thing and they've got like one personality trait. With that being said, I'm really excited about this book. I'm excited. So yeah, we're also getting another book by V.E. Schwab set in the Darker Shades of Magic universe and it's called The Fragile Threads of Fate. So it's set after the events of the third book. I also need to reread that series because I can't remember what happened except that there was a cute pirate guy at some point and I liked him. I don't know too much about what's going on. It seems like there's a new queen of white London and she's getting a little bit fanatic and all of our old characters are in it or at least some of them are in it. I know, is his name Reese? The brother is in it, the prince guy? Okay, anyway, I'm excited. I need to reread the other ones first, but I am excited to read that. The last new release I'm really excited about is called A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. I just, this sounds very fun. So I've heard a lot about Ava Reed. I haven't read anything from her yet, but I need to. And I think, is it her that her books are a bit dark? So I'm excited to see where this goes because this synopsis to me sounds a little bit, a little bit rom com -y. It's like Hallmark movie, but do it different with fairy tales. So basically this girl likes this likes fairy tales a lot and she's at school for architecture. And there's this one specific book of fairy tales that she just like loves. And the author has passed away. And then there's an opportunity for our main girl to go to his house and like redesign it after he dies. So she's like, oh my God, of course I'm gonna do that. Like he's my favorite person ever. But then she gets there and there's this guy there that's like also living there but he is trying to actually prove that our favorite author is a fraud and he's going through all his stuff and then other stuff mysteries unfold so i'm excited about that it seems really cute but i also wouldn't mind if it was a bit dark i don't know i don't know i'm also just kind of assuming that there's romance maybe there's not that's kind of how it sounded to me so i'm excited next up biggest disappointments i have three i really 
maybe you should just choose one book for each thing for this, but I can't. So sorry, you get a long video. Number one is Babel. Now, I know so many people love Babel. If you love Babel, I'm so happy for you because it's so fun to love a book. And great, I love that, okay? I also love everything that R.F. Kuang is saying in Babel. What didn't work for me, I'm gonna have a full review out on my Goodreads. So you can read that, it's like an essay. But first off, pacing was a big issue. It was very slow in the middle and the beginning sort of. And then at the end, a lot of things were happening and you were just like, it was like whiplash. Like I didn't really know what to feel. Second issue is the characters. I didn't really feel like they were fleshed out. Robin, I feel like there was an attempt at helping him have, like making him have some interesting kind of conversations in his head about, um, you know, he was a little bit conflicted about whether he wants to support the institution and everything it's doing, or if he wanted to sort of rebel against it. And that's cool. I think we could have gone deeper into it. Leanne from Leanne's library made a really good point, which is that there's no sort of internalized racism, sexism, anything like that in these characters. Like somehow they're able to, in the 1800s, fully verbalize their thoughts on contemporary feminism, basically, and other things like that with no sort of, like, it's like they were unaffected by the lives that they've lived. And it's just not realistic for anyone, even now. It was really disappointing because I heard so many good things about it. I was really excited to read it. And it was not great. And also there's all these things kind of just that get beaten into your head. Like, it's like, there are these footnotes and it'll be like, someone says something racist. And then the footnote is basically like, that was racist. I felt like the whole thing was very disrespectful to Kwong's readers. I feel like the vibe I got was that she just thought she was really smart. And in her defense, she is really smart. And it's a really well-researched book, but I just honestly watched Leanne's library video about Babel because those are basically, I think, pretty much the exact same things and read my review on goodreads if you want to know more i really really want to like it which is why it was such a big disappointment so sorry second i don't really have much to say book of night by holly black i was really sad i liked the cruel prince a lot i still need to read stolen air i barely remember how this went i didn't care i didn't like the world it was just a letdown i really really liked the cruel prince so that was sad i also realized i haven't been giving synopses so i kind of just hope that you knew about Babel and Book of Night, I couldn't even tell you a synopsis because I don't care. I don't care. Just know that it was by the author of The Cool Prince, Holly Black, and I was really sad. And then another biggest disappointment was I'm Glad My Mom Died. Now, I know that pretty much everyone has really good things to say about this book, and I'm just gonna say one thing to keep it brief. I do have more thoughts about it, but this is my big issue with it. And Jeanette McCurdy, she uses exact numbers in her book when talking about her eating disorder. Now, if there's anything that anyone who's had an eating disorder or has kind of gone through treatment for it knows, it's to not say numbers. You don't say what your weight is. You don't say like how much weight you lost exactly. You don't say what the calories are in something and you don't say how many calories you try to eat a day. Anything like that, you don't want it, okay? Because it could be really triggering to someone else. And Jeanette McCurdy includes all that. She's like, I was this many pounds, this so many calories was in this, and this is why I didn't want to eat it was because it was like, too many calories, and I lost this many pounds, and this was like the goal I was trying to hit. You don't want to do that because Jeanette McCurdy is so many young girls or boys or anyone could be reading this, anyone with an eating disorder could be reading that and sitting there being like, well, I'm not as skinny as she was, so I'm not doing it right. Or worse, using that book as tips to, you know, further their own eating disorder. And it's really a massive oversight. It's really irresponsible on Jeanette McCurdy's part. And it took away so much from my enjoyment of the memoir. That one was truly, really disappointing. I'd say like Babel was really disappointing, but uh, I'm glad my mom died. That was just so irresponsible. And I just really, I couldn't, 
I can't get behind that book for that reason. I hope she's okay. I hope Jeanette's doing well. I hope that she is able to kind of progress and grow a little bit further from where the memoir left off. It felt a bit premature. I hope she learns more, but that was just so irresponsible. I just, yeah. Anyway, biggest surprise. I was really surprised by this actually. And that is A Serpent and the Wings of Night by Clarissa Broadbend. And this, I'm just really surprised because this is a book talk book. And I don't like book talk books. And I picked it up because I have Kindle Unlimited and I was like, why not? And it was a solid, like almost four stars. There were things I didn't like. And like, if I'm being picky, you know, the writing wasn't always the best and whatever. But in terms of enjoyment, I would say like almost five stars, maybe. I had so much fun. It's sort of like the Hunger Games, but with vampires. The ending was a bit sus and I'm reading the second one now and I'm easing into it, but I just loved it. I loved it, I don't know. Sue me, okay, sue me. New favorite author, we have the queen, Diana Rayborn. Deanna? Diana Rayborn. And also Tracy Dion. This is my first time reading both of them this year. And also maybe Natasha Brown who wrote N Assembly. I'm really excited to see what's happening with her. Newest fictional crush. Okay, I have a few. First off, we have Cell from Legendborn. If you know, you know, like he's just, he's mysterious. He's kind of a bad boy. He's got brown hair. That's always going to be my thing. And he really just kind of like, he knows when to let Brie kind of shine, you know? And he's protective, but not in like an annoying, really possessive way. Like he kind of knows, like Brie can sometimes do her own thing. And I like that in a guy. Next, this one isn't really new fictional crush. This one's more of like a revived fictional crush. Nathaniel. Um, I read Sorcery Thorns last year, but like look at him on the cover. Like I didn't really know what he looked like. I mean, I, I imagined in my head. And he's just like, he's funny, he's sweet. He's kind of like gruff, but then he really cares. And he's like a bit mischievous. I love it. Obviously my man Stoker. Are you joking? Are you joking? Like he really, he lets Veronica shine. I mean, obviously there's a theme here and he's kind of giving like Dilf, like he's a little bit disheveled and like scruffy and I, I don't know. It's really nice. Another one, again, not really new, but I finished the series this year is Ravi from A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. He, again, he knows when to let his girl shine. He is just, oh my God, he's funny, he's sweet. He is like kind of puppy dog, but also smart. I also just feel like he's really hot, you know? Next one is favorite characters. And again, we've got Veronica, oh, Veronica and Stoker. I'm gonna just shut up now about them, but I don't want to. We also have Brie from Legendborn. I just, I love her. She's been through so much. The book begins with Brie grieving her mother. And I just think, She's got really complex emotions and she's, oh, love her. Also Pip from Girl Girl's Guide to Murder. I finished that whole series this year. I don't know why it's not on this list, but I don't know why. I think it's up there with like Legendborn and Bloodmarked. Next up, a book that made you cry. <laughs> I have a few, Bear Town by Frederick Bachman. I hadn't read a Frederick Bachman book before. I read Bear Town on audiobook. And I cried. I don't know what to say. It was so good. I don't know why my expectations were really low. The only thing was at some points I found the writing a little bit cheesy. Bear Town is about a hockey town and their hockey team. Um, check trigger warnings before you go into it. Essay is a main theme in this book. The second book is Assembly. I've already said it made me cry and it just, it did. Read it, read it. It took, I read it in a day. You can read it in a couple hours. Like it's just, Wow, it's just wow. Crying in H Mart, I also, I also cried at that one. Next we have a book that made you happy. This right here, babe. I read it over the last two days. I finished it yesterday. And it's just very, it's very cute. Read Sorcery of Thorn Manor if you haven't. And then read this, this was very low stakes. I miss these characters. It kind of just felt like a hug. Solid four stars and I really liked it. And I was just kind of smiling reading it, which I don't, don't usually do i usually try to be a bit more mysterious but i was sitting at the beach and i was like 
And then obviously we have A Curious Beginning. I've just been keeping these two books on my lap because there's like, I'm just always talking about them. Obviously it made me happy. Too happy, probably. I was, I was jolly. I was kicking my little feet. I don't know what came over me. Next is the most beautiful book you've gotten. Oh my God, look at this. The Adventures of Amina Al-Sarafi by Shannon Chakraborty. I haven't read Sir Shannon Chakraborty yet. And I really want to. I heard mixed reviews about this book, but oh my god. Oh my god. This is the UK edition. This though is my favorite bit. Are you kidding? Are you kidding? We've got basically the US cover on this other bit. It is, I don't know. Other than that, it's kind of just plain, but it's like, oh my gosh. So yeah, I'm obsessed and I'm gonna be reading this soon. The last question is what do you still need to read? And I've touched on those a bit, so I'll go through them quickly. Adventures of Mina al -Sarafi. This is about like a mommy pirate woman that's getting back out there. Not in terms of dating, but in terms of she's got like one last mission or something. She's coming out of retirement and she gets the game back together. And I like that. I like that idea. Ashes and the Star Cross King. I'm actually reading that right now. So I just wanted to finish the Crowns of Neaxia duology. Obviously, I really want to get to the final empire and maybe more of Mistborn because I want to start my whole Brandon Sanderson journey. And I've been really feeling fantasy lately. I want to read The Dragon Republic. I have it, but my ca my camera is sitting on it, so I'm not going to pull it out. But I, I need to read that, continue on with my series. I'm going to do a whole video about my summer TBR. So the last book I'm going to mention, well, okay, two. Perilous Undertaking, which I will be reading like in the next couple days. And Carrie by Stephen King. I haven't read any Stephen King yet. And this is his debut. And it's also short. It's not like it where it's like if you, you could probably use it as a brick or something. I feel like everyone knows what this is about. Basically, this girl gets bullied. She has a bad relationship with her mom. She has telekinesis, I think. And there's that scene with all the blood. But I've never seen any films of it. And so I want to read it and then watch a film. And I'm really excited. Okay, so that was, uh, that was really long. Um, I'm sorry I wouldn't shut up about the books. I hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to like and subscribe and like make sure you turn on the little bell thing so that you can be notified every time I upload. I'm going to try to kind of get into this whole booktube thing because I just love books. Thank you for watching. If you watched this far, comment a, a boat emoji or something like a pirate emoji because I'm just in a pirate mood. And tell me what you're reading or what you think I should read this summer. Okay, bye.